All right, uh, let's talk about the lightning cards now. So the first card we're going to talk about is Irvian. So uh, it's 3 CP, 7K, uh, cap 8. Uh, forward, when Irvian enters the field or attacks, choose up to two cards in your opponent's break zone, remove them. Uh, if two characters are removed, uh, you uh, Irvine gets plus 2k, haste, and first strike. And then he has a very relevant S ability, uh, S and a lightning, choose a forward or monster of cost 5 or less, break it. Um. So, okay. Let's get this out of the way. Uh, I don't know why this is a lightning. Uh, or, sorry, a legend. Um, <laughs> um, like, it's so, it's so it feels kind of boring for a legend. Like, it's just, like, generically good. I remember when I first saw this, I was like, wow, this card seems mediocre. Um, but I, I think Emmanuel, like, when you, we were uh, first, like, we, we were talking about this when it was first revealed. Uh, and you mentioned one particular deck that this is really good in, and that's the faster uh, version of Ice Lightning, um, because this replaces x Def, right? So the thing is that I'm not sure about is... Um, so x Def is, like, one of the only things that you can do when your opponent has Feel Thanos, the 7 CP Feel Thanos on the board. Um... So I don't know, like, like this definitely does not <laughs> this this makes your feel Thanos matchup significantly worse, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but that said, okay, ignoring feel Thanos, um, it uh instead of being a non bow with Shantoto, it actually works really well with Shantoto. Um, the S ability being a break basically turns Shantoto into removal, which is really good. Um, you know, before Shantoto kind of just like. I mean, it was kind of like got your removal with, you know, recurring Sephiroth and stuff like that. But um, Irving's a little more proactive uh, with that. Uh, and honestly, like Breakstone Hate on a on a beat stick isn't that bad for a tempo deck, right? Like this this punishes the um, the you know Earth decks that are just pitching like the especially wall decks that are just like pitching walls for colors and then planning on getting the back later with like Kusith or whatever, right? Like this punishes that. Um so I think this is perfect for like a tempo uh type of deck. Um I know you've messed around more with like mono lightning, um Emmanuel. Like what do you uh what, um, what are your thoughts on this card? Yeah, so I I've been a little I I, I flip flopped a bit on this card. I, I still think that uh, I don't like it being a legend because yeah. it's just boring, uh, and legends uh, sometimes used to have like have like more interesting effects. That being said, that's just me being nitpicky. Uh, the card is is decently strong um, because it, it falls on the same category as the Ice Yeshola that we talked about, where it's doing two things at once. It is enabling a little bit of a control aspect by removing, like attacking your opponent's break zone while also providing some aggression with the haste and first strike, right? This card basically reads unblockable, right? Especially the turn you play it, if you remove uh, four characters, he's 11K, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you get the effect twice uh, if all you remove are characters. So this guy says haste unblockable. Um, and then at the um, at the same time that he is attacking your opponent, he's also getting you value. Now, Yeshtola removes a forward, which is very relevant. Uh, but this guy attacks breaks on and That's something that's kind of lacking in Lightning. Mm -hmm. uh, so lightning decks usually like try to tempo out your opponent by removing their forwards and playing your own. However, if your opponent's deck is very recursion-heavy, then all of that kind of can go to waste when your opponent starts recurring their forwards. Uh, this guy just solves all your problems. Right, it just goes. I'm gonna remove that and also attack you. We used to have a card like Alba that did the same yep. thing, but Alba's a little smaller, right? Uh, and and um, this guy just removes more cards in general, is bigger, and also the S ability is like surprisingly good. Yeah, like that's, that's what I was gonna say is like the immediate comparison is Alba, but Alba doesn't have S kill something, right? Yeah, yeah, S kill something is fantastic. Um, I've seen people test it in Ice Lightning. I have some friends who have mm -hmm. immediately added them as a three up. I don't know how yep. relevant he is. I can say that in Mono Lightning, he is a very good um, 
uh, mono lightning as a deck, right? It's very reactive normally. Like it, it just kills your thing and plays a thing. But some, sometimes your opponent just doesn't play anything to like build. Like if you're playing a gentleman's game, right? You you, uh, you build backups. I build backups. So sometimes you need proactive plays. And Irvin is like the perfect play because you just go, mm -hmm. okay, if we have nothing else to do, you don't have a board. I'm just gonna remove some things and swing at you. Right and 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 I, I I lose nothing by paying three for this guy. So it's very again very simple, very straightforward, but the effect is strong enough, especially in a deck that needs this type of effect at lightning. That definitely uh, you should consider it. I I'm running it as a three off in mono lightning right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I I have this as a three of in ice lightning right now, uh, testing it. It hasn't really done a lot, but I also haven't gotten a lot of testing matches in, so it could just be, you know, variance, right? Um, or me not playing it in places that I'm supposed to be. So Yeah, it's also harder to like abuse his special on Ice Lightning, I feel. You yeah. have less backups normally. Um and sometimes you have like one lightning backup, so like playing him and using a special <laughs> if you have both, it's like sometimes not viable. Yeah. Um uh, and also ice i think just has like better remove from game cards like it, like you can play the edward backup or something like that mm -hmm. whereas this guy i just like him in mono lightning cuz or, or maybe something like lightning fire or something like that mm -hmm. because it's decks that want to be kind of like sometimes a, you know when it's time to finish the game they want to be a little bit aggressive but also not have cards that are only aggressive. And this guy does both. He just like attacks your break zone and it's also aggressive and also like remove your forwards. Uh, it's it's good. I like it. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess, do you have anything to mention as well, Pat? Or uh, Just that I haven't tried playing with it, but I played against it. I mean, against you playing it. Mm -hmm. I was originally pretty low on this card, but the more you used it, 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 it is really strong like deceptively yeah um, like the fact uh, that the the s isn't even a tap is like yeah 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 um and killing Mo i mean monster hate always appreciated you know um <laughs> yeah like i mean i always evaluate beat sticks really low like you know like i think astinian is not super great for example right and like when i was looking at this card i'm like oh like what does this do that you know Estinian isn't doing, but it's the break zone hate and the S ability. Like this isn't like I would read this as a beat stick, and this is not just a beat stick, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, yeah. no, but it can be. That's it, the yeah. thing. It's yep. flexible to be. So I, I, I think mono lightning specifically needed an effect like this to mm -hmm. compete with decks that are abusing their break zone as a, a secondary resource. Yeah, I agree. So you know. Maybe not, you know, L slot worthy, but still uh, very good. Uh, or like not not legend worthy in the set, but you know, yeah, yeah. still very good. Um, this card, oh, however, oh, if we're oh, talking about cards that are worth the legend slot, <laughs> oh baby, <laughs> holy shit! All right, Zandi, five CP, nine K. Uh, forward, when Zandi enters the field, choose a forward opponent controls. If you control four or more lightning characters, including Zandi, break it. Uh, when Zandi enters the field, choose one or uh, forward in your break zone. If you control eight or more lightning characters, play it onto the field. No ifs, ands, ors, or buts. Just whatever you want from your break zone, just play it onto the field. Um, <laughs> uh, this card's absurd. Like... <laughs> Uh, like, my first thought was immediately, all right, Chaos Arc, right? Like, this plays Chaos from your break zone, right? But, like, even, honestly, if you just play, like, even a fucking, like, Ishtola, or not Ishtola, um, Alize, right? That's still really good. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, you play, like, Shinryu from your break zone, like, I don't know, like, this, this card is, like, I, I feel like... Nothing that I say is going to be new, because everyone who saw this card on release was like, wow, this is like one of the best legends in the set, if not the best legend, but probably not the best legend, in my opinion. Uh, damn, I have so much to say about this. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think this is like easily the best, or one of the best, if not the best, monocolor payoffs like ever printed. Yeah. Um... 
so to give some context of why there's some bias, the fir my first Nationals deck in 2018 was a Mono Lightning <laughs> deck. Very, very biased on Mono Lightning, right? And it's been, I'm a Mono Lightning copium person. I always try to make it work and it sucks. <laughs> Last, I swear that the people who designed this card were looking at the previous meta because Mono Lightning kind of made a little bit of a splash last set, where it used the, it uses the Scions to build a board, and then has a bunch of like high cost stuff that has EX as early discard slash ways to recover while you're building your Scions, right? Mm -hmm. uh, problem with the deck is once you draw those like let's say like ideas and Araneas and all that stuff fail thanos it's kind of like eh, i don't want to pay six for this right yeah and sandy says i'm gonna solve all of those problems at once so you those forwards that you're adding let's say give you the example of Aranea, right Aranea, six cp ex kill a three or less and if you're at damage five i think kills like a five or less right um very few situations you want to be cast hard casting that card. Mm -hmm. It's just six CP to kill something. It's kind of eh. And Zandi says, "All right, just run it because it has an EX. Discard it early. I'm gonna get it back later, right?" Mm -hmm. And then suddenly, when this guy becomes five CP, play this, kill something, play RNA, kill something else. Then suddenly that RNA looks really good, right? Mm -hmm. So um, it's the possibilities of what you can do with Mono Lightning are endless. Uh, you don't have to wait for eight lightning characters. Honestly, sometimes you just play this as a 5 CP 9K kill something. It doesn't kill anything active. It doesn't kill anything of any cost. It just kill anything. And getting four characters, it's just three backups, right? It's trivial. Uh, this card's insane. I love this card for people who are playing in mono lightning. You play four, or five lightning. You rush to five backups. You play... Alice into uh, Grahatia into, in my opinion, Wind Yishtola to protect your board, and then you play this guy, and you you win the game. Like there's no, like mm. there's no way you, you you just win the game on the spot. You play a Thanos, you play a Shinryu. Like I'm still on Shinryu. It doesn't matter. Just play a Shinryu. Mm -hmm. um, you play like you said, Alice Grahatia. Like even the Irvine doesn't matter. You just get a free forward into the field and you get to kill something there's no coming back from that for for, for a lot of decks so uh this is my absolute favorite card of the set maybe my favorite card in the last like 10 sets it's so <laughs> so exciting i'm so excited for mono lightning mm -hmm. yeah it's the only like semi like if i were if you were to tell me like what is the competitive 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 deck that you're like tweaking, it's mono lightning. I've been like tweaking with it, testing a little bit, and you know, moving numbers back and forth because this dumb card exists. Yeah. Yeah. What about what about you, Pat? Um, I mean, I I, I can't gush about it any more than Emmanuel just did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is my um, card. <laughs> yeah, this is like Emmanuel's card, and then I'll, yeah. I'll let him take the spotlight for for this card. So nothing to add. Yeah, same here. I mean, like, I'm not a mono lightning player, so, um, you know, I, I think Emmanuel pretty much said everything that I would have said, but, you know, uh, a lot more because <laughs> <laughs> I'm biased, though. Maybe, yeah. maybe mono so. um, um, but no, I, I, I don't foresee it, does. I think it's good. Yeah, th this is, this is, um, definitely going to see play. So, absolutely. I'd be surprised if not. Uh, all right, let's talk about Odin. Uh, this is the Lightning Hero Summon. Uh, 3 CP, choose a forward or monster of cost 4 or less, break it. If you control 5 or more Lightning characters, also draw a card. Um, okay, obviously, like, you know, get this out of the way. Obviously, Mono Lightning, you know, 3 of. It's monster hate, forward hate um, that cantrips you. You know, just solid card. Um, I'm more curious if this sees play outside of Mono Lightning. Um, five or more Lightning characters is like, I feel like doable in like, like let's say it's like Water Lightning Scions. I feel like that's pretty easy to get five Lightning characters. Um, I was thinking about this card in like the Army of One, the the Water Lightning uh, Lightning deck. Um, because that does play some lightning monsters like uh, Melusine and Spectral Keeper and stuff like that. Um, so I, I haven't play tested it there yet, but I it was like one of the it was one of the things on my to do list basically. 
Um, I, I know you're the the mono lightning uh, guy, Emmanuel. So I, I'm curious what you have to say about this. I mean, in mono lightning is like the obvious. Like th- this is mm-hmm. it's it's incredible to see power creep in this sense. <laughs> A strictly better four CP lightning from Opus One, right? Like, yep. It, it costs one less. It can trip you without lightnings, and it breaks monsters too. Because sure, um, <laughs> appreciated. Yeah, I think I think especially in like Odin decks, right? Because Odin is also a relevant uh, summon name. Uh, I, I'd, I'd be very surprised if we don't run this, right? We used to run a three CP Odin like this that broke what is it a four to cost three or less and a or a monster of cost three or yeah. less and this is four or less right so yeah. if we ignore the the draw a card it's still better than that odin okay so, yeah that's fair so um i think just to get card name odins in decks like the one that you're saying the army of one deck yeah absolutely this is very flexible um the fact that it costs three regardless of it if it's your turn i'm, I'm looking at you bahamut <laughs> uh your opponent's turn it's just a solid card. Um, it, it's 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 harmless. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's it's hard to say much about like the cards that are just kind of very solid. Just do you know? Like this is just power crept. Uh, yeah, Odin, it, right? it, 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 yeah, exactly. It's like, it it does <laughs> a thing and it does it very well. Yeah. No, it's a good card. Uh, I'm just upset you guys didn't call the lightning deck by its real name. Oh, Tor- torpedo lightning. Torpedo lightning. <laughs> 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 Torpedo lightning. You're, that's what I call it in FF decks. Just FYI, yeah. so, <laughs> Pat, Pat is correct, and, and, and that will remain the name forever. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would probably play this Odin in, in that deck for sure. I mean, like half your backups are lightning. Yeah, you, you play one um, Melusine or or like the, the the tapping one, the Spectral uh, Keeper. Yeah, yeah, Spectral, and then and then that's it. You got five. Yeah, yeah. that's fair. That's fair. It's pretty yeah. easy to get yeah. by. Yeah, because so. you're—I mean—you're playing Kalia into Quan anyways, usually, or at least mm-hmm. I do. Um, so that's two there, and then, I mean, I might like I—I I run more water backups, like Lopperitz and shit. So it right. might be a little harder for me, but I mean, I could just tweak that, right? So. And yeah. then Princess Sarah is usually. Oh lightning. yeah, good point. Yeah. So you you and also like you. In that deck, you care more about this being an Odin, so you can revive yep. your light than mm-hmm. it than just using it as a summon. I barely cast summons in that deck. So yeah, true. Doesn't matter. Like it's just nice to have. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So pretty solid. Um, Emperor, uh, is it Gestal or Gestal? I think it's Gestal. I think Gestal. Um, two CP backup. All right. Um, when Emperor Gestal, uh, or Gestal enters the field, you may discard one card. Uh, it can be any card. Uh, when you do so, choose a forward in your break zone, add it to your hand. Uh, it also has a tap sack for one CP. Uh, choose four cards in your opponent's break zone, remove them from the game. If these cards are of the same card type, also draw a card, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, this card is just like very good i think that a lot of I, I, we we were chatting a little bit about this um you know off camera but the the fact that this discards any card uh makes this card very good like it, no restriction about like oh you have to discard i think like chadley says summon right or no it's search a summon right um so, uh, search as a summon uh but chadley i think you have to let me let me, let me check yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we can, yeah we can but there's the right. um there's the avalanche operative um that you have to discard another avalanche operative to search. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep. Oh yeah, elf or whatever. Yeah. Um, uh, although that's a, uh, that's a search. Though, no, no, no. But... Avalanche is discard one card as well. Not. So Chatley discards any card. Oh, yeah. Let's search for a lightning summon, and we saw that in um um in U.S. Nats there was a mm-hmm. mono lightning as Arg that tried mm-hmm. to. Use like Chadley and what's her name, Aresia, uh, 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 the Type Zero card that lets you discard a summon to get a summon to get rid of uh, Chaos and Arc in decks that in matchups where they weren't good. This is just another card mm-hmm. that furthers that uh, game plan, but it's more generic because instead of just searching for a summon, it lets you get a four back from your hand, and you don't, you know, you don't have to do it. It's it's really good. 
Yeah. And I think the, the tap sack is also what I think puts this card over the edge, right? Like, um, reactive break zone hate on a backup is, like, I mean, obviously, like, Edward is really good, right? I, I mean, Edward doesn't get rid of, um, uh, it doesn't break, right? Uh, but Edward also doesn't do anything else, right? So, uh, you know, I, I like having the reactive break zone hate uh, on a backup that actually does something else, right? Yeah, it draws you a card, and and I mean, again, stuff like let's say like old mono water that's trying to uh, set up for a big Leviathan turn. Like just four cards is a lot. It's a lot of cards that you mm -hmm. get rid of, and being like, all right, so now you gotta like start all over again and I draw a card, and then I combine that with Irvine. You're never doing that, right? Mm -hmm. It's 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 very good. I think this is a card that most lightning decks would play as a one of. Uh, not more than a one-off, but I'd be surprised yeah. if I'm not looking at a Lightning X deck and I'm I'm looking for a backup, and this will be one of my first options, I think. Yeah, like, I mean, even before, we were talking about uh, Zandi, right? Uh, and, like, you were saying you would revive a Shinryu. Like, this is what pitches the Shinryu into the break zone, right? Like, exactly. when you don't need it early. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, one thing to note, this is, like, super irrelevant. It's Category 6 Lightning card. <laughs> Um, I don't know if anyone is brave enough to try this, but in uh, Stooge's version of that deck, we have a Lightning Stooge that doesn't really do anything. Uh, this may give you an option to discard that Stooge for a backup, maybe? If you're, like, <laughs> wearing the new Shadow and our land on backup, I don't know, maybe. Uh, it's interesting. I, I'm not saying that that's the way to go, but it's an option for sure. Um, Pat, did you have anything mentioned? Nope. I'm just a big fan of these modular backups. Um, Same. That are 2 CP as a base rate, but you could make them 4 CP mm -hmm. to get that additional bonus. And it's actually even better, because as you were mentioning, you can discard a dark or light card. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> like, I yeah. think a, a good comparison point, actually, is uh, Johnny, right? Um, uh, Johnny, uh, I... Uh, played in my Ice Lightning deck, right? Because that deck is already playing, like, what? Um, 35 FF7 cards or something stupid like that. Um, just naturally. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think I still play Johnny in that deck. Johnny's his name, right? The Johnny, Johnny, yeah. 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 Um, but, like you said, like, he always costs 4 CP, and this guy costs 2 or 4, right? Um, but yeah. you're pitching your light or dark cards for the other two CP effectively, right? Yeah. Um, it's a kicker instead of a <laughs> forced cost. Like the the other backup I've used in a similar slot is instead of Clan Gully, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Um, but that uh, has the experts though. True. <laughs> that that is actually one point I wanted to point out is because we were talking about one of backups that this would slot into. Um is that Lightning has a lot of, like, you know, uh, one of EX burst backups, I feel like. Like, the the Reeve, for example, is, like, the the new one that came out uh, last set or the set before that's, like, EX, look at two, you know. Yep. Uh, three cards and add one. Yep. Um, um, no, I, you go ahead. Um, I'm surprised that Pat didn't bring this up, so I'm going to bring it up. Pat, you're supposed to be the meme person. Uh, so okay. this... Discard a card from your hand, meaning that if you discard a black mage, you get the effect. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> so this uh, triggers this card effect. So something like black mages or something like the 3 CP white mage, that's the water one that says when you discard a card due to some sort of effect, yeah. the card. Wait, so if what? you were to play that, yes. So there. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of this card. So, the, so there was a, a, a deck piloted by Sam Prime, and oh my God, when Opus six, it was last year, yes, right? Opus sixteen. Yeah, uh, so it was an infinite draw white mage deck, right? You, you would just discard black mages and draw a card. Um, <laughs> by, by, yeah. So, so that white mage says when you discard a, a card due to any summon ability, it could be yours, it could be your opponent's. You draw a card. So theoretically, if you have that white mage in play and you play this Sid, you get to return a card to your hand and also draw a card. Yeah. Although the white mage is once per turn. So no, it isn't. No, it isn't. No, I haven't pulled up. What do you mean? No. The three C no, you're it's yeah, three CP standard unit, opus sixteen. Oh, during your opponent's turn. Oh no. 
No, it's, oh, it's not. Oh, oh, I misread that. Oh, never mind, bro. Just ignore me. Oh, that's so <laughs> I, sad. I, okay, we both misread the card. <laughs> I'm so sad now, but anyway, it works with black pages. So well, you can Edgar it in. Oh there you God. go. <laughs> <laughs> if we're talking memes, I know this is the real, this is real deck building right here. <laughs> all right, it's yeah. only your opponent, but but it does work with black mages. That's all I care about. <laughs> 4K. Here you go. <laughs> all right. Um. So you added this last minute. Um. Yep. This slide. Uh, so, uh, I'm honestly, I'll just read the, uh, uh, the ace and I guess probably also the queen, um, ace is four CP AK, uh, enters the field or attacks. If you control two or more class, uh, zero cadets, either forward or backup, you draw a card, uh, that's on enter or attack. Uh, it also has discard a card, dull, a forward, uh, and he just also gets 1k for whatever reason. <laughs> um, I didn't read, like, I didn't know that this card existed in the set. I just kind of, like, glossed over all the class zero cadets. When you pointed it, it out, like, an hour ago, I was like, wait. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think everybody did that, to be yeah. completely honest. We are so used to every class zero card being an ace that we just look at an ace and we're like, ah, why would we play this? We have good aces, right? But no, this card is very worth looking at. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. um, I guess I'll t <laughs> since I added it, I'll talk about it, a bit about it. Um, so this is more for cadets players. I know people are out there and they're on the copium that cadets are good. <laughs> but um, th this set got a very good set of cadets, like very good. I think the best we've had in, in a while. Uh, cadets struggled in the lightning department a little bit. Uh, not a little bit, actually quite a lot. So Cadets tries to be like a three-color deck. You have Wind cards, you have Fire and Lightning. And Lightning always used to be the weakest one. In fact, it was the one that didn't have a backup. This set sold, but it has Trey, which is a fantastic backup. You know, EX Burst. Choose a job class hero Cadet and breaks out, add it to your hand for three, and also has an S. Like, that just deals 9k damage. Very good. Queen is surprisingly good. We've never had a good Queen. And this one is like, it's a haste forward if she attacks you she's basically like unkillable right cannot be chosen by a summons cannot be dealt damage uh but only when she's attacking right um and the ace is just you know at first i was like why would i ever play anything that's not the fire ace that one that looks at top two top five grabs two class zero cadets okay fine uh but that card i think it's a little bit um slow for this format because you say okay when he attacks he kills something but really nowadays what the heck is attacking and getting value right this card as soon as he enters he draws you a card which you could argue the other ace does as well but also if he manages to attack he also draws you a card every time so he just becomes this like engine of of, of draw a card draw a card draw a card every turn and you're very likely playing fire so you can easily give him haste it's trivial and if if you have something just to give you an example, let's say you play this with the Haste Goblin or with, um, right? So let's say Haste Goblin. You play a Haste Goblin and you play a, a, a Cadet. You play this guy, draw a card, right? You sap Goblin, you draw a card and give him Haste. You attack with him and draw a card. So it, it's just a, a, a insane engine of card draw. And also every card that you draw that is useless you just pitch it to to dull something and give him power so he's also kind of sticky when you think about it that way especially mm -hmm. against like fire decks or decks that are trying to get rid of him via damage or power reduction uh he can just get away from that pretty quickly um so i think for cadets players i'm not saying cadet is going to be like a good deck but it's definitely way more playable than it's been for years now so yeah. Give this a try. I promise this ace is way better than, than you think. Like while you're talking, I a comparison came to mind that I didn't think of until now. Um, which he, he kind of reminds me of Furion almost, right? Like he he draws a card the turn that he comes in, right? He's conditional for what he does, and uh he has you can pitch the useless cards in your hands to 
effectively make him unblockable, right? Or he has an ability that threatens to do that, right? Um, I guess in Ace's case, you have to actually discard the cards, right? Like, Firion, one of the reasons he's so good is because you just, like, pretend that you have fire and water cards in your hand, yeah, even yeah, if you yeah. don't. <laughs> um, but I think being able to... It's just also the threat of... If I have lethal on board and you don't get rid of him, I'm winning the game yeah. because I'm just going to dole all your forwards. It, it's similar to, uh, what, again, I'm going to keep making comparisons to other cards. Um, uh, the Ice Lightning Lightning, um, where you just play her and then she doles the entire board and then you win, exactly. right? Exactly. Like, this kind of does the same thing, except this car, instead of tapping your backups, this discards cards to do the same thing. Exactly, exactly. Um, so pretty good. I, I'm very, very happy with this card. Um, I think it's uh, not maybe what cadets need to be super duper competitive, but I, uh, if I was a cadet player, I'd be very happy mm -hmm. with these cards. Uh, Trey and Queen are not relevant names, so you're not removing good cards to put those in. You just put them in. Mm -hmm. Right. It's just when you look at the ace, you're like, okay, do I run this ace or I run the fire one? That's where your decision making goes. But for Trey and Queen, just just put them in there. There's no there's no if, answer, but you immediately play three of each. Mm -hmm. What about the nine? I mean, is that uh, relevant at all? Or? It's a little more uh iffy. So yeah. uh because the old nine, the the dual yeah. color nine, has a pretty high ceiling where you can just dull two things, and yeah. and now we have a lightning backup, right? So ideally, if you have a, a fire back, a fire cadet, and a lightning cadet backups, you can play him for two. Yeah, uh, and it's pretty good. However, I don't know if minusing power on entry and attack is good enough now, especially when you want to spend your haste giving uh, cards on ace rather than nine. Uh, I think this nine is actually serviceable. I, I at first I read it and I dis I, I dismissed it. I'm like, yeah, the other nine's better. But then the more I read it, I'm like, you know what? You know, three CP, seven K reduces damage by two thousand. So he he's kind of sticky versus certain decks, and also he just dulls things every turn, <laughs> like <laughs> it's like for free. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. he he prevents an attacker too. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, it's every turn. It's your turn and your opponent's turn one time. If you have two or more jump class hero cadet, he includes mm -hmm. himself, right? So one backup. You just yeah, for zero, just dull something. I, I, I've been running, so I, in my theory crafting deck that I have, I run the other nine, but the more I read this card, I'm like, oh, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe this is the guy. Maybe maybe it's this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pat, have you ever played any cadets? I have not. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I feel like this would be your kind of deck. What do you, what do you no, mean? No, uh, <laughs> it's not. I don't know. I'm not. It's not like. It's because it's like super tribal. I'm not mm. a fan of decks that sort of build themselves. It's like, oh, I just pick oh, like, yeah, the or type zero or whatever. Um, the only type zero, like my favorite type zero card is Bahamut Zero. Oh. <laughs> that card is so cool. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> we, we need to make another one that doesn't cost six. Like, same yeah. effect, it costs four. Yeah. You mean That's your like favorite my favorite. Type zero, type zero card zero. isn't Mew. <laughs> hey, like, Mew like is mine. <laughs> Oh, See, this, 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 this is the difference between you know <laughs> me and you. <laughs> yeah. No, me well, just searches another one. Yeah, whatever. it's so good. It needs, yeah. I know it searches I wanna, Tono. Now I have a fire ice backup. I, I can do so many cool things. <laughs> it's it's also <laughs> hilarious that the backups that you run if you're running like dual color, right? Like if you, if you disregard um, mm -hmm. wind, which you could do potentially because you got this this card now, and you go. Fire eyes. The backups that you're using are type O characters. They just have like no synergy with these yeah. guys. They just so happen to be in this. <laughs> they, the yeah, game exactly. Game. <laughs> um, I don't know. I like... Just one. Oh. Hmm? oh. I was going to say one comment about Queen, but if you had another comment first. No, I was just going to say, are like Class Zero and Ajuda Cadets like rival factions or something? I never played Dev Zero. Me neither. <laughs> I think they are the Agito Cadets. Aren't they? Oh, are they? Because they, 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 they changed the name. It used to be Agito, and then... Dude, spoilers. I, I think... Isn't the Agito cadets, like, the elite of the class or something? I don't know, dude. I don't know. I don't, know. I don't care about this game. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for Queen, I was saying her on her attack trigger... Or not, it's not even a trigger, actually. It's just a static effect. But um, 
The second one is is basically trinket text. It doesn't really do anything, right? Cannot be chosen by summons or abilities. If your opponent that, was going to do anything, does that prevent nexus or no? Um, oh, actually, it does. I mean, nobody. Oh, I that's feel like, for. but like, who's killing queen when they flip Odin, right? Like, <laughs> right, right. So I, I feel like that second part is sort of trinket text because if they were going to do anything, they could have done done it before it mm -hmm. declared attacks. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I, I agree, uh, but it's also one of those where it's like niche situations where it's like, okay, my card chooses when you're going to use that effect, not you, right? So you have to do yeah. it. Yeah, it corners your opponent in, in terms of timing. Yeah. And then the EX thing makes sense, actually. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. but very narrowly good. it does, but it's one of those like, okay, if you're going to do something, it has to be attack threat, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm not... Yeah. If, if you let me go into combat, you're done, right? Like right, right. Um, sneaky kind of good, but good good point on the e axis. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else to mention or? Nope. All right. Uh, let's move on to Black Knight. Uh, this is another yeah. card that <laughs> you added last minute. Um, so two CP multiplayable monster. Uh, when Black Knight enters the field, choose one forward or monster of cost two or less opponent controls, break it. Uh, and then five, so two lightning and three colorless, so five mana total, and sack. Uh, choose a forward or monster, break it. Um, so, okay. As somebody who's played a bunch of Rydia, uh, you know, this card makes me shudder a little bit, right? <laughs> CCP kill Rydia is, like, <laughs> annoying. And then it kills, like, every, like everything else on my board. Like, come on. Um, I don't know. But cost two or less feels slightly narrow outside of, like, a tech card. That's the only thing that, like... I mean, I... I you know, you, you were the one who added this, I guess. So you probably have more to say about this card than I do. It's because... So if Zandi wasn't a card, I'd be a lot lower on this card. But oh. Sticky, you want to put sticky things that are not forwards, right? Huh. So... <laughs> Playing this out and it being a character count for Zandi mm. is really good. And Mono Lightning has the problem where sometimes you ramp up to five and you, yep. you're ahead. You kind of like don't have anything to do with that CP. So you're like, eh, this gives you something for like, oh, if I'm ahead and I don't need to commit to board more, I'm just going to leave my backups open. If you play anything, I'm going to kill it. Hmm. Right. So it just gives oh. you something to do. Yeah, with that extra CP, it's very good. I've, I've been very surprised. Like, would you just play this even if you, your opponent didn't have anything of cost two? Just like uh, if you had nothing else to do with your hand. I, mean, I know I'm going against a deck that doesn't have two, or I'd probably discard it and be like, okay. uh, if I need an eighth character for Danny, <laughs> sure. Okay. Uh, but uh, you just discard it in, in, in all in every other match. If you get the kill, cool. But yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, but the um, the character count is very relevant, and the something to do with my extra cp very mm -hmm. relevant so all right what about you pat um i mean i i didn't like the only the one lightning monster deck i have is that ravana deck i was talking about <laughs> yeah um, it probably doesn't and that. the the etb is nice but uh, I'm looking for cards that can sack for free, and then yeah, the yeah. five mana sack isn't too appealing to me. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess it, it might fit into the um, like a one of in the lightning deck, torpedo mm -hmm. lightning. Uh mm -hmm. oh yeah, I didn't think about that actually. I should try that. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's probably the one spot I would look for it in, mm -hmm. but um, not for my pet Ravana deck. Well, I'm switching off Radiant anyways, so this card doesn't matter to me. Ha. <laughs> I'll, I'll kill your Zidane's. God damn it. <laughs> You'll draw me right into it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, I, that's pretty much all the Lightning cards. I guess, is there anything else to mention in Lightning? Um, just because, again, you have been playing a lot of Mono Lightning. Um, I don't... I think there's anything particularly interesting. Let me do a little, little quick search here. Um, I guess Dragoon players got a little. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, 
no, I think I think uh, Firion could be interesting. Uh, the card that I hate is named Man in Black as Man in Black because yeah. that is such an interesting card. It's so interesting, but there's no way we're playing this over the five CP one. Yeah, no, and for I sure. Hate it. That is such an interesting effect. I I, I want to use this card so badly. Yeah, this is the Man in Black that uh, prevents your opponent from like attacking or blocking, basically. Yeah, um, they don't play three, which is like. Okay. And it's like, well, the other Man in Black also does that. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, I guess actually, yeah, let's bring it up just because I feel like, well, I've played Dragoons. I don't know if the other two of you have played Dragoons. Yeah. Let, let's talk about the Dragoon a little I'll bit. Have a sleep. Have a sleep. Um. So 3CP, 7K multiplayable, Dragoon, forward. Uh, when it ETBs, choose an active forward. This is the key line here that I don't like. Uh, deal at 4K. If you control four or more backups, deal at 8K. So four or more backups is totally fine in Dragoons. I feel like yep. you're trying... Like, the whole point of the deck is to be trying to get to as many Dragoons on the board as, as possible anyways, and you do that through your backups. Yeah. Um, Good that you say that because I think people misunderstand the Dragoons deck. Oh yeah, everyone I everyone I've like played against always talks about it as like um, a very aggressive deck, and it's just like not like I I know Steve D always mentions this whenever he talks about like Dragoons. Uh, in uh, he he had like a, a deck tech for it. Um, and what he said is spot on. It's like, he, this is a very reactive kind of, well, I don't know if he said this exactly, but it was basically like, you do not play this as an aggressive deck, right? It's, oh. uh, like, that's how you lose, basically. <laughs> like, you play Alice, and then you generate as much CP as possible, and then you kill your opponent in one turn. <laughs> um, it, it is. I, actually, you know, even that, I, I kind of, like, don't necessarily agree i actually treat dragoons it's interesting i think no one has figured it out completely i treat dragoons as almost like a burn deck in the sense mm. of draw a bunch of cards then draw play a haste or hit you for one yeah okay answer it did you answer okay i'm gonna play another haste or hit you for one and then you keep mm. doing that at ad nauseum or you know at yeah. infinite until... actually that's a good point um when i when it because when i think about it actually like i i feel like i'm always threatening the kill in one turn and that's what makes exactly what you're saying like actually work so i think i think actually like if i just cut barbara from my deck i actually don't know what changes <laughs> um uh, nothing <laughs> yeah like i like the the fray is obviously like the the big card and that is purely reactive right like it just stabilizes you and then you're right like you just play hasters and you 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 two for one with your forwards who you know etb kill something for free right yep um and i hate i hate you for one two for one <laughs> yeah exactly yeah okay actually that's a good point um so this is in that vein right etb kill one of your opponent's forwards for free but it has to be an active forward you and it's only 8k like the other dragoons are killing the forwards for free like just no questions asked right like the um was the dragoon that like uh cards in hand um uh where is it you reveal uh, the cards in your hand. Opus 12. Yeah, you reveal four, uh, cards in your hand, and then you just choose a forward and break it. Like, no questions asked, right? Um, and it's also a 3 CP 7k. Uh, obviously, the new one doesn't care about cards in hand, but, like, if you're playing Dragoons properly, like, I mean, I guess this is better in the case where you, you know, didn't find your Alice right away and, you know, are actually, like, struggling with cards in hand or you're playing against like i i guess this is actually probably a little better in the ice lightning matchup right because all of their cards are 8ks uh or 7ks yeah. um but in there you know you want this as an answer much sooner than you'll have four backups probably so i don't know i think for me this replaces the dragoon that um reduces cost when you have dragoons the one that becomes one cp 7k uh, oh because I'll, yeah, a lot of the times I play, I I draw that card. And I'm like, Ugh, yeah, I no, I, I play that card and I'm like, all right, cool. I have plus two k on my big dragon. <laughs> yeah. So exactly. So this card is like, well, you know what? I'd rather sometimes just kill something. Yeah. <laughs> rather okay. than just Cast a vanilla for one. Right. Mm. Uh, the, this is the state of the game, right? Yeah. It used to be that one CP seven k was like, oh my god, like a <laughs> you ever played. 
But yeah. uh, now it's like, you know, I'd, I'd rather sometimes just kill something. Yeah. And then it's a standard unit. Yeah, just pitch it. It's fine. <laughs> All right. Yeah, fair enough. Um. Uh, oh, and then the Furion. Uh, I hate this card. I think this card sucks. <laughs> I think this card's ass. This is why I did not. <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna say Bart's Boko. That's all I'm gonna say, and, and that's <laughs> playing it. And and I I don't care much for it. It's one CP, which is like okay. We have like Puck, the backup that revives one CPs. I guess. I, I've heard people talk about this in Ice Lightning, and it's like this doesn't attack resources. This doesn't that's do so anything that you want it to do. That's copium. Like yeah. you'd rather be playing yeah. a steam. Like come on. No. Yeah, like Estinian <laughs> is also one CP forward that attacks twice, but yeah, no. And I don't play Estinian e no. either. So <laughs> uh, whoever is saying that is on uh, like some really really nice copium, and I want some of it. So mm -hmm. no, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs>